middle of a series called What's Next? What's Next? So I'm going to jump right in. And uh, last week we started off, we kicked it off. So make sure you see, uh, listen to it on our uh, iTunes podcast. Uh, watch it on YouTube, on our YouTube channel as well. And SoundCloud, all the different avenues that we have for you, for you to be able to catch up. But everyone's asking the question, what's next? What's next? And that's because God's Spirit is inside of every single one of us. So it doesn't matter what your belief is. It doesn't matter where you are in this faith journey. We all believe that we want to know what our next step is. What's next for my life? Sometimes that question even gets asked after we've achieved what we thought was going to be success, what we thought would bring us fulfillment and purpose. And when we get it, we find zero fulfillment and purpose. And we ask God, what's next? What's next for my life? And so Proverbs chapter 28, verse 18, kind of a quick recap of last week. This is what vision's all about. If people can't see what God is doing, they stumble all over themselves. How many have had that kind of experience in life, right? I'm stumbling through life. I don't know which way to go. I'm making mistakes. My life is total chaos. That's because we don't have vision for our life. And the Bible says that when we attend to what God reveals, what God shows us, we are most Bless. And that bless doesn't mean like, like, come on, press down, shaking together. That bless there doesn't mean a ha ha joy, but bless means I have joy despite my circumstances, all right? So everything can be going crazy around me, but I know I have joy because I'm exactly where God wants me. So that is joy in our life. But also, we might be asking, how do I know that I'm on the right path? So Psalms chapter 16 says this, verse 11, you will show me the way of life. Granting me the joy of your presence, knowing I'm on God's path, knowing I'm on God's journey. And so, God, thank you for showing me that way of life. And so many of us, we're on a spiritual journey. And so we have four things that we talk about at Avenue Church. You hear it in Growth Track. You hear it right here on this platform. But we have four things that we do here at Avenue Church. First one is to know God. That we want you to know God. And that was last week. We want you to know God. Not know religion or no church. We want you to know Jesus. And guess what? He wants you to know him in an intimate way. Not just know about God, my boy Stephen Curry. Come on, somebody. But not know about God, but to know God. So we, we want to know God. Number two is that we want to find freedom. We want to find freedom. Do we believe that God can set us free from our addictions, our habits, free from our past, free from our yesterday, so we can settle our today and move forward into our future? That we want to find freedom, but also number three is to discover purpose. Now, how many know that you were, that you were made on purpose and for a purpose? You were not an accident. Can I get an amen this morning? All right? I don't care what your mama told you, all right? You are not an accident. You're not a whoops. You're not one night, all right? God made you on purpose and for a purpose, all right? But my brothers are 20 years older than me. You are made on purpose and for a purpose. How many like that, everybody? (laughs) Also, the last one is make a difference. It's make a difference. That God created us to make a difference. To make a difference. That I don't care who you are. I believe that every single person in this room, we want to make a difference. I want to make a dent. I want to make an impact. I want to make a difference for Jesus Christ. I want to make a difference in this world. And God wants to use you in a powerful way once you discover that purpose. And so this is going to be a great series as we gear up for the fall. How many are so happy our kids go back to school tomorrow? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Educators, thank you so much for all that you do. But I'm excited for my kid to go to school because I work from home. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And so I'm excited what God's going to do in this series. So today, the first one is find freedom. Find freedom is the second one for today. Excuse me. Know God and then find freedom. Raise your hand if you've seen the movie Braveheart. Maybe you've seen Braveheart, right? My boy Mel Gibson, he's played William Wallace. And there's a scene in Braveheart that I love how he gets his troops together and his misfits together and they got the war paint on and he's doing his speech, right? I should do that speech every time I do something, right? We were born free men, right? He's doing that speech and it's intense. And also he goes, when the bad guys come our way, all right, what are we going to do? And they all go, run, right? We're going to run away. He goes, no, we need that freedom. We need to fight for our freedom. We need to pursue our freedom. But for so many of us, God designed us to be free, but we run from it. We run from it. 
And he's saying you could run now and die later, or you could prefer, pursue freedom now. But for so many of us, freedom are those, maybe those hang-ups. Freedom is the things that the enemy of our soul wants us to run from, to hide from, to avoid fighting for what God has called us to be. But I got some good news today. God wants us to find freedom. It's not hiding. It's not hidden. God is saying, here it is. I have set you free. And he wants us to be free. I believe that's going to set some people free today. Because we believe that once you know God, then you find freedom. You cannot find freedom without knowing God. So we got to go through that process. See, in the Bible, how many remember Moses, right? And all of a sudden, uh, our Mr. Henson, H Charles Henson, right? Or, yeah, how many remember in the old movies where they, he said, Pharaoh, Pharaoh, let my people go. All of a sudden, God took the Israelites out of Egypt, but he had to spend another 40 years getting Egypt out of them. So God can remove you from your current placement, but he also has to remove some stuff inside of you. So I want to encourage us today, God, what is inside of me that I need to be free from? What is inside of me that needs to go away? What painful scar, what type of wound do I need heal so I could live life totally free? You know, a few, about, what, two years ago, in November, it was a, uh, my son had a birthday. It was a birthday party. And right before uh, the birthday party, I got the DSLR camera out. And I was going to be a good dad, right? Take pictures of everything, right? Like commentary. Here, he's opening up the first gift, right? Videotape this whole thing. And, and be a good dad for my son's birthday party, five years old. And there's this metal piece on the Canon on the DSLR. And so on top of that, that, that little piece, I took a pliers, and I was trying to get it off. And I needed this thing off so I could take pictures and be a good dad, right? I'm a good dad. And so I tried to get it off, and finally I get it upset. And I know you're looking at me like, Pastor, don't get upset. No, I don't. I'm always angry. And so I'm trying to trying to get that piece off the camera, and finally I just get frustrated. I'm like sweaty. I'm, it won't budge. It won't move. So I went like this. I hulked out. I picked it up, and I went, ah! And boom, came off, right? And so when it came off, I went down this moment, and I looked, and I said, I got it! And so I decided to inspect the object, and I said, that's why it was stuck in the camera. There's skin and hair inside of it. But how many know it wasn't always inside of it? It was right here. And so when I took it off, it scraped my arm. All of a sudden, blood's everywhere. And how many know I'm an 80s kid? I'm like, super glue! Where's the super glue at? We got to glue this thing up. We'll be fine. I need super glue. And so I went to the bathroom and I wrapped it. And literally, I was going to be fine, right? I was going to put a Band-Aid on it, celebrate my son's birthday. Literally, what, 20 minutes, the party's starting. Guests are showing up. And I said, I'm fine. I'll just cover it up. But my amazing mother-in-law was there. And so she's in the bathroom with me. And she was like, you're going to die. You gotta get out of here! You gotta bleed to death! I was like, calm down, lady. I'm getting nervous now because I need to be careful who I surround my life with. And so I was like, oh no! She's like, you're gonna bleed out and die! I said, okay, fine. So I got in the car, drove down Blue Diamond, and I saw this place that said ER, quick care, emergency uh, room. So I went into the place, and I went, hey, hey. Uh, and I thought, I know what this looks like. You know what I mean? I'm like, hey, God's got a plan for my life. He was cut for me. All right, I know what it looks like. And so I came in, and I was like, hey, I'm so sorry. I accidentally cut myself, okay, and, and I need help. And they look at me, and they go, is it bleeding? I go, uh, yeah. I mean, it's like blood seeping through the paper towels, you know. I go, yeah. And they, and they go, we don't do blood here. <laughs> oh, 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 what? You know, like look at the yeah, emergency room, right? What if it's an emergency, you know? So I was like, really? So I got my car, drove down to the ho next hospital, came in. They gave me treatment, an amazing bill because they're generous. Come on, somebody. <laughs> now I got purple lips on my arm forever. I love it. People uh, every Sunday go, Pastor, what happened? I said, a cougar got me, all right? And I was like, hey, lady, I'm married. Back up. <laughs> Some of you get that later. It's okay. Praise the Lord. Come on, Abby. That was good. That was funny. But I want to tell you something. Here at Avenue Church, if you expose your wound, we're not going to say we don't do freedom. How many know at Avenue Church, we say, come as you are. You're going to find freedom in Jesus Christ. I don't care what happened. I know God can heal that. And God can set you free in Jesus' name. Because we believe here at Avenue Church, you can be set free. But there are wounds in our life that come down to a specific area in your life that continues to have an effect on you, an effect on us. Maybe you have a wound in your life that's a relationship wound. Maybe you're deeply hurt at one point, and now you pushed everybody away. 
Maybe you have an identity wound. Maybe somebody at a younger age or even last week began to tell you who you are, placed a label on you that is untrue, that is a lie from the pit of hell, and that has become a wound in your life that stopped you from taking a step or a risk or be able to trust who God is. Now, how many know that there are wounds in our life that affect our lives? But I believe today, after we begin to know God, you could really find freedom. But listen to me, freedom is not a heaven and hell issue. God takes care of that on the cross by knowing him. I know God, and so now I know heaven. I have relationship with him. I'm getting to heaven. But freedom is not a heaven and hell issue. It's a, it's a quality of life issue. But for many of us, we're going to heaven, but we're living like hell here in our mind because of the wounds that we have. And I'm here to tell you, God wants you to live a free life. God wants you to live a good life. God wants you to live a blessed life. God wants you to have joy. Instead of having secrets, he wants you to have a story that's going to help somebody else for his praise and his glory. And so we believe here at Avenue Church that we want people to find freedom. I love what Jesus said. He went through temptation. He goes in the temple. And in Luke chapter 4, verse 18 through 19, this is what Jesus said. He's quoting Isaiah chapter 61. And Jesus gets up on a platform and he says, The Spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. Then he said this, And he sent me to proclaim freedom to the prisoners. How many in this room, you say, I need some freedom. I am no longer a prisoner. I am free indeed through Christ Jesus. But a lot of times we get asked, how? How do I find freedom? And here's the thing about finding freedom, that many of us, we don't realize that we're actually bound. We don't realize that we actually need freedom. That what, what happens is we, we begin to be comfortable in the lies. We begin to be comfortable in different strongholds. There are lies in our life that cause us to stay where we are. That cause us to be stuck in place. Makes us feel like we're running on a treadmill of just repetition, repetitive thoughts that prevent us from moving forward in God's direction. That we think that there's nothing we can do to change. It is how it is. And guess what? You're correct. How many know God's the one who changes us? God's the one who sets us free. God is the one who will be able to do a work in our life. But there's a word in the Bible called stronghold. I have a, a, a scripture, uh, the definition behind me. Stronghold means a prisoner locked up by deception. A prisoner locked up by deception or living a life by a belief that is not True. I'm here today by the power of Jesus Christ to break some lies over your life, to break some deception, to break unbelief out of your life so you can be set free. You know what a stronghold is? A stronghold is anything that exalts itself in our minds, pretending to be bigger than God. But how many know nothing is bigger than our God? Nothing. But the truth will set us, everyone say it, free. The truth will set us free free. In the early 2000s, there was a young lady by the name of Elizabeth Smart. And when she was 14 years old, she was abducted from her home. She was taken under the care of a guy named Brian David Mitchell who kidnapped her. And he would feed her lies, feed her disbelief and deception. That he did such a good job at doing this that he would actually take her out in public. And when he took her out in public, he would disguise her and they would be in public. And all she had to do was tell somebody, Hey, I am being abducted. This is the kidnapper. All she had to do was say it, but she believed in the lie. There's power in believing that lie. But you only empower the lie when you believe the lie. Even when there was one situation where police officers came up to her and said, Hello, young lady. Have you seen a little girl, 14 years old, by the name of Elizabeth Smart? They were asking Elizabeth if they seen Elizabeth. And Elizabeth believed the lie, was so afraid that she said, No, I did not. How many know that moment she could have said, I'm Elizabeth Smart. He's right there. And she would have been totally free. But she had lies that she believed. What's great is she got rescued saved. She created the Amber Alert that we now know all across America, and she's making an impact. But Satan, he may have power in this world, but he has no authority. He may have a power to tell you a lie, but that lie holds no authority over my life. I'm a child of God. I am saved. I'm redeemed. I'm a child of God. But the key to freedom, and check this out, the key to freedom 
is relationships. Yeah. Is relationships. So I love my preaching. Come on, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to brag of myself a little bit. Yeah. yeah. I love my preaching. Right? I listen to me every Monday on YouTube. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm kidding. I'm joking. I love my preaching. It's so good. But y'all, can, can I tell you, every testimony that I've heard at Avenue Church, powerful, amazing testimony, is not because of my preaching, but it's because of relationship. It's because of relationship. Because someone decided to come along to somebody else and said, let's do life together. Let's find freedom together. That I can prove it. I can ask anybody in this room, name five previous message titles that I preach. And you'd be like, oh, Tame Your Monster. That's a series. Give me a message title. Uh, the, the one where you talked about Steph Curry. I like that one. You know? You might not be able to tell me a, a sermon title, but I promise you, you could tell me at least four or five people that in your life impacted you in a powerful way. Maybe they impacted you for the good. Maybe they impacted you for the worst. But maybe it's a coach. Maybe it's a mentor. Maybe it's an educator or a teacher. Maybe it's somebody who helped you and propelled you. But that's what relationships are all about, that we need relationships for the day-to-day. -day. I'm going to preach messages that are deep and life-giving and understandable. I'm going to preach messages that you could take home on Monday and apply it. A message that on Wednesday when you're going through a, a low season that you're going to go, I remember what Pastor Jeremy said on Sunday. But we need relationships for the day-to-day. We need relationships for our dark hours. We need to do life with others. And here's why we need relationships. 1 John chapter 1, verse 9 says this. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just, and he will. That might help somebody out today, all right? It's not he might, he could, he should. It says God will forgive us of our sins and purify us of all unrighteousness. I think that's great news this morning. That is why uh, what, next week we're going to have water baptisms. Why? Because when we go in that water, we're saying, you know what Jesus did in my heart? Jesus forgave me and he purified me. When I go in that water, I'm coming out a new creation in Christ Jesus. I'm purified. So Jesus will always forgive us of our sins and purify us. So if we confess our sins to Jesus for forgiveness. But also I want you to know we confess our sins to others for healing. We confess our sins to Jesus for forgiveness, but we confess our sins to others for healing. This is what it says in James chapter 5, verse 16. You have to forgive me, it's incorrect above, but here's the scripture verse. It says, therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you might be, everyone say it with me, healed. And for many of us in this room, I want you to know, we confess our sins to others for healing. But for many of this room, we have a wound right here. There's a wound in our heart that said, I confessed to someone before, and I got hurt. And I want you to know there's power in small groups at Avenue Church. That small groups at Avenue is a place that is safe. It's a place that is confidential. It's a place where you can confess to somebody, and I believe with all my heart, you'll be healed. Why? Because God will always forgive us, but he wants to use people to help heal us to take us through a journey, a process. And so that's why at Avenue Church we have small groups. I'm so thankful that we're going to have small group training again uh, in two weeks. Uh, I'm so grateful that we are a church that as we grow bigger, we grow smaller through small groups. I'm grateful that Avenue Church, we're not a church with groups, we're a church of small groups. But I want you to know that every small group we have a free market-based system. So that means we might have a basketball small group. We might have a cooking small group. We might have a men's lunch at Jason's Deli, awesome, amazing, small group led by an amazing leader. We might have women's or wife life. We might have Bible studies, prayer, outreach. But at every small group that we have, we always do ESPN. And ESPN stands for encouragement. We'll always encourage. We'll never put somebody down. We'll always encourage. We'll share scripture. There'll always be a, so a Bible element to that. That's what separates us from another club. We will always, always, always pray for one another. And then we we'll always ask, what's your next step? What's next for your life? Have you ever been water baptized? No. I'll get water baptized with you. I'll go on the journey with you. Have you ever given your life to Jesus Christ? No. I'll sit with you on Sunday at Avenue Church and we'll raise our hand together because there's a next step for you to take. I've never served in the local church. I'll help you serve in the local church. We can serve together. 
But what is your next step? I've always attended small group, but then you should lead a small group because the best way to learn is by teaching. And so what is your next step? But God, we confess to Jesus for our sins and we confess to others for our healing, for our freedom. And hear me, church, you're only as sick as your secrets. But allow your, your secrets to be a story, a testimony of what God has done in your life, of the day that Jesus set you totally free for his praise and his glory. I want to encourage you to surround yourselves with the right people. That's why it's such an important step. So I encourage you to do community. Get involved. Join a small group, lead a small group, but also serve in the local church. Pray for opportunity. Pray for people to do life with. Pray for the time of the encouraging. The enemy's going to all of a sudden make you so busy that you can't get together and do life with others. I encourage you to make the time and prioritize that. But the enemy does not want you to connect. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25, in the message version, this is what it says. Let's see how inventive we can be. Let's get creative how we get together. Let's be inventive in, in encouraging love and helping out, not avoiding worship together. Some do, but spurring each other on. I'm going to encourage you, church, that, 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 you know, on a particular Sunday morning, and you're like, I don't want to go to church. I'm tired. The enemy's going, yes, just you, yes, stay home. Yes, relax, right? The pastor's preaching today. Come on, somebody. Yeah, you deserve a day off. And that Bible says we, you need to get to church so you can get encouraged, so you can get spurred on, so you can get ready for Monday, so you say, you got this. You can do this. I'm so glad you're here today because you were made up purpose and for a purpose. Come on now. But that is why we have community together. But for many of us, I've heard this said before, I don't know if i got real friends. I want to encourage you today, if you get real, you will have real friends. If you get real, you will have real friends. Friends who walk in when everyone else walks out. Friends who don't rub it in, but they help you work it out. Come on, I need a friend like that, yeah. Friends who need you as much as you need them. I mean, you know, you need a good, a joyful friend, right? Give me a friend who laughs. That's the kind of friend I need. But I need a real friend. And Avenue Church, we're not just a place for, for, for you to find a, we're not just a friendly church, but we're a place for you to find friends. A place for you to find family. A place for you to do life with others. You see, last year I went to, I was invited to a ranch out in Montana out in the middle of nowhere, in the Fort Smith area. It was just for pastors. So I flew out there. I said, okay, babe, I'll go. It's a great opportunity. And we got to fish and to hunt. And every evening, though, we got to sit around at a round table. And at this round table, man, they serve you Montana steaks. Come on, somebody. We were, man, all right, oh. It was wonderful. But at the, and they called it family dinner. But at the start of every dinner, once everyone got their food out, we pray. And the leader of that group say, all right, guys, I want you to share a high, I want you to share a low. Wow. Of course, the first guy, his high is like, I'm just happy to be here, you know. And the, the low is, you know, kind of a low, you know, this is what's going on in my church. But then by the third or fourth guy, the highs became high, but the lows became really low. And I begin to find guys all around this table, they begin, slowly begin to find healing and freedom. Think about it. These are pastors. They know what the Bible says. They're going to heaven. We believe in Jesus. We love what God says and his word says. But they were finding true freedom because they felt safe enough to confess. Felt safe enough just to share. I'm not just talking about sin. I'm talking about life. I'm talking about things you're going through. To say, I'm going through this. Nobody knows it, but this is what I'm going through. And I saw them find freedom. Begin to find freedom. Begin to find healing. But there's a reason why Jesus allows us to experience freedom. This is how I want to close today as our worship team comes forward. This is how we find freedom. It's by what Jesus did on the cross 2,000 years ago. Now, how many know the story? A lot of times we hear it uh, right around Easter time. But there's a reason that Isaiah, in, the, in 800 years before Jesus died on the cross, he wrote Isaiah 53, verse 5. And this is how I want to close today with true freedom. And church, do me a favor. Will you believe with me today 
that right here in this service that God could set you free? That right here in this service God could heal us, touch us, and we're never going to be the same when we walk out of this building today? And here's what Isaiah said. Isaiah 53, verse 5, it says, But he was pierced for our transgressions. This is Jesus. He saw it, it take place before it even took place. 800 years before. He says, I see Jesus on a cross, and he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. That's secret sin. The punishment that brought us peace was on him. And by his wounds, another translation says stripes. By his stripes, we are healed. And here's the different four areas that we find freedom. Because in the night that Jesus was betrayed, soldiers took him in the garden. When Judas kissed him on the, on the cheek and said, this is the Christ. Guards took him and beat him. They took a cat of what's called nine tails, which was leather strands that had bone and wire in it and rock. They would dip it in, in, uh, in water to make it heavy. And because that cat of nine tails, they would whip Jesus. They would all attach to him, and then they would rip it off. They would begin to rip skin off his back. And if you're here today and say, that's gruesome, yes, because he loves us. That I am convinced that Jesus could have came back in any time in history to pay for our sins. Lethal injection, death by hanging. But I think Jesus looked at the entire history and said, I'm going to go when it's the worst, when it's crucifixion. Why? Because I want to die for their sins and for their healing. And so because of those cat of nine tails, he would whip it on the back and with leaf stripes on his back 39 times. So number one, we have freedom in my body because of the stripes. Freedom in my body because by his stripes, we are healed. We are healed. Now, I want to understand this, but healing can be a little hard. I've asked the question myself, why does God heal and how come he doesn't heal? I don't know. I have no idea why. I can tell you a story. I was in Colorado. And God told me to pray for a completely deaf student, completely deaf in both ears. I'm hard of hearing. You know, I have a hearing aid in this year. And I walked up to him and I prayed. I quoted Isaiah 61. God's going to heal the broken heart and set the prisoner free. I said, God, heal him. And God heals his ears. The next day they went to the doctor, completely fine. He could hear again. It was amazing to see him be able to hear. I know. It's amazing. I was celebrating. I was going, come on, look at God. But there's a small part of me saying, am I next? God, are you going to heal me? And so many times when our loved one, we've been praying for healing, they die and they go to heaven. We miss them. It hurts. We're asking why. But sometimes we forget that heaven's the ultimate healing. It's the ultimate place of no tears, no sorrow, no pain, new bodies. In Jesus' name. But Isaiah, I love 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24. It says, by his wounds we have been healed. That's past tense, ladies and gentlemen. We can say, thank you that I am healed, but I already am healed. I'm praying God to heal me today for his praise and his glory. But then they mocked Jesus. They placed a robe on him. And then what they did was they made a crown because they said, oh, you're the king of Jews. So they made a crown of thorns and they placed it on his head. And that crown of thorns would go into his skull or into his brain, which caused uh, bleeding. And because of that bleeding, it caused excruciating headaches for him. And that's why Isaiah said the punishment was on him. So that is why we have freedom in our mind. The punishment of peace for our peace was on him. So we can be set free of our mind. How many know we don't need to tame the monster? God's healed the monster. That by the punishment of, of our peace was on him. So we find freedom in our mind. Number two, his punishment has brought us peace today. You know you got peace from worry, from fear, from anxiety. To John 14, verse 27, peace I leave with you and my peace I give to you. And my prayer is today, if you've never experienced peace, God's going to give it to you today. So they took him out. They took him to the cross. They laid him on that cross. They took nails and they began to drill into his hands. And they believed back then they didn't put hands inside of his hand. They actually put it on his wrist so that it wouldn't rip off so he could stay on that cross. 
he would bend his knees and cross his, his feet, put a nail through his feet. And the reason why they would do it at a bended knee is because he, he had to stand up in order to breathe. Because most people die by suffocation on a cross. That is the reason why they crucify people. So they, they would suffocate. But because of those nails, those nails, he was pierced for our transgressions. And that's the third freedom, is freedom in my hands. He was pierced for my sins. He was pierced for what I did. Pierced for my sins. And here's what's powerful. I believe this is going to set somebody free today. This is a promise from God, which is Hebrews chapter 8, verse 12. This is a promise for us today. It says, I will forgive your wickedness. I will forgive your sins. And I remember your sins no more. No more. Why? Because I died for it. You know what? God is not a father in heaven who said, hey, you're doing so good. You're on the A team. You're leading a small group. But remember what you did last year? God will never do that because he remembers no more. The moment you said, Jesus, be the Lord of my life, come into my heart. We are washed away clean, completely. Our slate is wiped clean. God remembers no more. But the problem is we don't. We allow the enemy to lie to us, to shame us, to guilt us. And that's why we need to find freedom. But then in the ninth hour, as he's on that cross, pushing himself up to breathe, he says, it is finished. And Jesus dies on the cross. The guards, they took a spear and they pierced his side. The reason why they pierced his side was to see if he was alive or not. And when they pierced his side, the Bible says the mixture of blood and water came out of him. And I love this. I never realized this. But science shows. They, say, they did a scientific study that shows the mixture of water and blood it means that he didn't die from suffocation. He didn't die from the cat of nine tails or from the nails. But he died because his heart exploded. Jesus died from a broken heart. His heart broke, pain for our sins. And if you're here today and you've had your heart broken, I want to say Jesus knows exactly what you're going through. And that's the last one is there's freedom in my heart. His heart was crushed for our iniquities. But his heart broke for you. And he wants you to find freedom. It's available to us today. That maybe you've had an experience in your life where your heart was broken by death, by disappointment, or a failure. And God's saying, I know what that's like. I was crushed for you. In Psalms 147, verse 3, it says, He heals the brokenhearted and He binds up their wounds. God's going to heal your heart today. You're going to find freedom in the mighty name of Jesus. So can you stand with me, please? Let me pray. Let me close it out. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, God, thank you. God, thank you. God, I even want to have a moment to myself just to say how amazing you are. Thank you that you didn't just go to a cross and die. But, Father, by your stripes we are healed. The chastisement of our peace was upon you. You are pierced for our transgressions and your cross for our iniquities. Thank you, Jesus, for what you did on that cross. But it's not just an Easter message for us today. The power of the resurrection, it's not a story, but you want us to be resurrected. And so, Father, I pray today we begin to find freedom in every area of our life. And so, Father, I want to take everybody through the first step. And so I want everyone to close your eyes, bow your heads. I want us all to pray a prayer together. I want everyone to say out loud, say, Jesus, I need you. Say, thank you for dying on the cross. Say, thank you for paying for what I did. So today, I receive your forgiveness. Say, today, I receive freedom. Say, today, I'm going to live for you. Today, I'm going to give you my life. Say, today, I give you everything. Say, I now know who I am. I'm saved. I'm healed. 
I'm completely free in the mighty name of Jesus. Come on. Thank you for watching the Avenue Church YouTube channel, but don't stop here. We would love for you to join our online extended family and subscribe so you don't miss a single video. And don't forget to share this with a friend. You can find out more information about us at avenuechurch.cc and you can watch us live online on our Facebook page every Sunday. You can also support the ministry by visiting avenuechurch.cc slash give to help us continue to reach people around the world for Jesus Christ. Thank you again for watching and God bless.